beautiful people. Hello, Ebonites. Welcome back to my channel. If you are new, make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit the bell so you can be notified of when I upload new videos. If you are not new, welcome back again. Thank you so much for being a part of my community and thank you so much for joining. So today is a Q&A about Tanzania. I posed a question on my community chat tab and we got some great feedback. So I wanted to just go over some questions and give you some answers about the United Republic of Tanzania. I know I've covered some of these things in some previous videos. So if you want to get some more in-depth answers or a different point of view, make sure you check out some of my previous videos as well. But I'm gonna go over some things that you guys have asked me directly and give you some insight about my perspective and some facts in regards to the questions that you answered. So keep in mind, this is my perspective. Um, some of the answers will be based on facts as well, obviously, but some of them I will give a little bit of insight just based on my experience as being in the culture, like I mentioned, over two dec decades and having been going to the country since 2009. So I have a lot of um, insight about the design culture, about the country in general, and my experience is a little different and a little unique than other foreigners because when I'm there, I am not necessarily there as a foreigner even though I'm technically a foreigner um, because my entire family is there. So when I land, I'm in immediately in the local community and you know housing local housing i'm going with around people who are not native english speakers so um, i'm getting a little bit different perspective than someone who is there um, as a foreigner so anyways let's get to it let's go to the first question that we had on there so the first question was for first time travelers to africa specifically tanzania such as myself, is there anything you suggest we do to help avoid or to help adjust to the food and avoid negative stomach reactions? So that is a good question actually. Um, just on my personal experience having traveled to many countries, I always say that I have a very American stomach as many of you who are from the West or from uh, let's say just Canada, America or, the, or Europe, it's gonna be primarily the same thing. So my rule of thumb is steer clear of street food. Now you will see a lot of people are very adventurous and they will try to street food and have no issues. But typically that could be a recipe for disaster because they don't follow the same regulations that we do here in the US. And um, you know, even in New York sometimes I, <laughs> I might hesitate to get something from a street vendor. But um, you know, the regulations are just a little bit different there. Um, basically there are no regulations when it comes to uh, food prep. So you never know if the food's been sitting out for a while, uh, you know, if the food was around something where it was contaminated. So I just always err on the side of going to a place that's an establishment versus um, street vendors. So that is my piece of advice as far as that is concerned. Let's go to the next question. When going to Tanzania for a long-term stay or to move, what are the visa types to apply for and how long are the visas for? So I'll give you a high level understanding about the visa situation. Just to preface this, this is my disclaimer. So I own a company along with my partners called First Class Africa, if you didn't know already. And one of the services we provide are legal services. So we partner with local attorneys, Tanzanian citizens, who specialize in foreign investment and um, immigration. And we always advise our clients within the first 30 days of going to the country to make sure you sit in front of a legal professional to give you all the information, the correct information, so that you can make an educated and informed decision. So I'll give you a high level answer, um, but if you need more detail, then I highly suggest that you book my company, First Class Africa, online for some legal uh, representation. But to give you an answer, Yes, there are different types of visas that you can apply for. You can start the visa process before you arrive in the country. Um, some take longer than others. The most common visa that people enter the country of Tanzania on are going to be the tourist visa. Um, now, you were asking before what types of visas are there. So there are different types. There's like student visas, there's business visas. You know, there's different types that you can uh, apply for. The most common ones are going to be the student visa, the business visa, and the tourist visa. Um, the average visa outside of the tourist visa is going to be anywhere from two years or more, depending on, again, which visa you get.
Um, you cannot give a specific answer on that because each individual person is going to have a different circumstance and a different reasoning for being in the country. So you have to decide, you know, what path you want to take and that will determine what type of visa you decide to apply for. But if you're looking at a short term, a quick way to just go visit, you're going to typically choose a tourist visa. Just keep in mind that it is exactly that is a tourist, tourist visa. And depending on where you come from in the world is going to dictate how long you can stay in the country and what the um, policies and procedures are around that visa or the terms I should say. All right, so let's move on to the next one. I'm reading these from my phone that you guys sent to me. Is it easier to have an unlocked phone so that upon arriving in Tanzania, you can get a SIM card so you'll have a phone that will work or is it better to purchase a phone in Tanzania? Will getting a SIM card allow you to use your phone so you can make calls to the United States? And I think there's more here. Okay, so I say it's easier to have an unlocked phone um, versus getting a phone when you first land. It's easier when you land just to have an unlocked phone and get a SIM card, and then you can switch over to something later on, but that's gonna be the quickest, most efficient way of switching over so you can make phone calls once you get there. Oh, here's the next one, here's a good one. In Tanzania, do they drive on the left side of the road and the driver sits on the right side instead of the left? Is it cheaper to use different modes of transportation or is it better to drive yourself if you do a long-term stay or move there? So yes, it is the British system. They drive on the left side of the road, which is most of the rest of the world. The United States is unique and we rebelled, as you know, when we broke off from Britain and we decided to switch it to the right side of the road. So they do indeed drive on the left side of the road. Um, as far as mo modes of transportation, you have several options. You have um, private transportation with your own vehicle. You have um, private transportation where you can use a driver that drives for you and you sit in the front or the back. You have Badajis, you have Boda Bodas, um, you have the, um, the Dala Dalas. So the Dala Dalas are going to be like the public buses and transportations. They now have a um, like a above ground railway system that's also now working. They have the Boda Bodas, which is like the motorcycles that you see in most other parts of the world. Um, and then the Badajis, which is like, you see those in India a lot, which is like a um, three wheel type of car where you have like two people in the back and the driver in the front. Um, if you're looking at long term, it depends on how comfortable you are with the driving system. Um, if you're driving in Dar es Salaam, for example, it's like driving in any big urban city where there's going to be traffic and, you know, they drive kind of crazy at times. And you have to, if you're not used to the the left side of the road you will have to get accustomed to that if you're coming from you know Britain or other places where they already drive on the side of the road you might adjust a lot quicker so initially I would always say maybe use um, some type of private transportation or public transportation until you get used to the system um, and it's oh I forgot one they also have uber there as well I can't believe I forgot that so uber is another form of transportation that you can use as well why in Dar es Salaam and one of the most commonly ones that foreigners use they usually either use ubers or they'll use badajis um, boda bodas are, are common if you're just by yourself because you can usually only fit one other person on a motorcycle as you know there's not a lot of room so if you have a family that's going to pretty much take you out of that category um dollar the dollar dollars are going to be um the buses they can be very crowded um hot but you know it's like any city it's another form of transportation so that's something to keep in mind if you're going to be outside of Dar es Salaam um, you will see those same forms of transportation um, most people there though will use more of a vehicle because it's going to be more rural the road the rural the roads are going to be um, bumpier so and this things are going to be further out spread out so you're going to want to use either the um, boda bodas or you're going to want to use the private vehicles. So it really comes down to preference and what you're comfortable with. All right, the next question. Is the water okay to bathe in and brush your teeth or would you place water filters on the faucets and showers? Um, I'm assuming people only drink bottled water. So when it comes to water, uh, I'm just gonna be honest I don't drink what tap water no matter where I am in the world including in America but especially in uh, foreign countries because the filtration system is much different than what you're accustomed to if you're coming from the West so I would say drink bottled water if it's for your own drinking water I would say yes you can shower in the water I shower in it you can brush your teeth but if you're going to brush your teeth make sure that your home has some type of filtration system um, 
and if you're going to be drinking it I don't recommend drinking the tap water but I will say this I have known plenty of people that come there and they drink the water and you know they say they're okay they're fine and it's kind of hit or miss as to whether or not you might have a reaction to it so some people fare better than others it just depends on a lot of times it depends on your home country and what your system is used to if you're coming from other countries like Asian countries or different places in the world it may not be you know Eastern Europe it may not be as much of an adjustment for you um, but if you're coming from um, I would say like mainly like Canada or America or um, you know the UK then I would recommend slowly transitioning yourself if you intend on just drinking the regular water like everybody else but I would recommend using bottled water and you can shower and brush your teeth uh, brushing your teeth is just like drinking it so I would use have a filtration system on your faucets showering you don't necessarily need a filtration system I shower and I've never had any issues okay so let's move on to the next one there's schools in Tanzania that teach Swahili to foreigners um, so yes to answer your question there's a lot of schools there that teach Swahili to uh, foreigners that's very easy to find um, you wouldn't have an issue with that they encourage it so as soon as you land you can pretty much find a school that you want to go to so I definitely encourage that <coughs> um, the other part was is it difficult to become a resident I wouldn't necessarily say it's difficult to become a resident. Um, I would just say that you are very educated on the process so that you don't have any immigration issues. Um, I think one of the misconceptions about Tanzania in general is that you um, have to wait until you get to the country in order to start the process and that is absolutely not true. If you are not in a rush, you can start the process of becoming a resident while you are in your home country. Um, just make sure that you, as I mentioned before, you hire some type of legal advocate or attorney to help you through the process because not all the information that is posted online is accurate or up to date. So sometimes the rules and policies change and you will not be privy to that just by trying to do it like a Google search. So you need to make sure that you're using someone that has the correct knowledge and certification and they're an expert in that field. Um, um, to help you with that process but no I wouldn't necessarily say it's difficult I would just say that um, it can be um, you need to have patience and you need to do it correctly and understand the laws of the land because they will not necessarily translate to be the same as what you are maybe accustomed to in your country how safe is it to travel with multiple children to the country so that's another good question um, Tanzania uniquely is extremely safe as a country both historically and culturally um, I know I did address this in another video so make sure you check that out as well but um, for the most part public safety is not an issue it's a very safe country um, so safe that in fact the police officers there do not carry guns and one of the things that's kind of funny as far as the culture is concerned if you're not accustomed to this is let's say you're like in a bender fender right and then you and the other driver are getting some type of argument or, or a dispute over what happened and it gets a little heated oftentimes you will find you know local people that are just in the area come over to try to help um, you know, calm the situation down and then the police end up being called in very often you'll have an officer that will just hop in the car with you to say let's go to the police station and work this out and that can be shocking to someone who is not used to that um, that they'll just you know get in the car with you say okay let's 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 take a ride to the station so that we can file the paperwork and figure out what happened or sometimes they'll tell you to follow them um, there's just a level of trust there that you may not be accustomed to but it is indeed a very um, uh, safe country to be in um, you don't have a lot of the uh, violent crimes that you might see in other places the most the crime that's most common there is going to be the petty crimes that you see anywhere in the world like the you know pickpockets the petty thieves that type of thing um, people taking uh, things material things um, that type of thing but not the violent crimes so um, it is a very peaceful country. I'm at ease there. I feel very at ease with my children there and I consider myself a pretty overprotective American mom. So um, that's a good question. And I hope that gives you some insight that even culturally, there is a very gentle, uh, accommodating communal culture. So yes, you will be just fine traveling around there. Somebody was asking, I would be interested in learning about the options of dual citizenship. 
uh, as well as business services in Tanzania. So that's a good question. So to answer that, just frankly, does Tanzania offer dual citizenship? The answer is no, they do not offer dual citizenship. So if you are interested in becoming a citizen of Tanzania, you will have to decide if you're going to renounce your current citizenship in order to apply to be a citizen of Tanzania, or if you're going to keep your current citizenship and just be a permanent resident in the country of Tanzania. They do not have dual citizenship. Now, sometimes people say, well, what if, you know, my child is born there, or what if I have a child of a Tanzanian citizen that you your child can get Tanzanian citizenship until age 18 at age 18 they will have to decide which country they are going to claim as their um, country of citizenship so that's just the law it is now you know maybe it'll change someday I don't know but currently you cannot get dual citizenship somebody was asking about business services um, so business services goes into the business visa uh, yeah I'm assuming you're meaning like starting a business in Tanzania um, how do you go about that so that goes into the same thing I was saying with foreign investment and um, what type of business visa to apply for so there's a couple different avenues you can go as far as that is concerned but you really need to be in front of a professional in order to make an educated decision about which avenue you're going to go in if you're going to have um, a business avenue where you're doing it on your own if you're going to partner with a local Tanzanian which is the most common common route that people take or if you're going to invest into a large business like manufacturing or mining or agriculture or something to that nature so it just depends on which path you want to take and that really does require a licensed professional to educate you on the different avenues that they have available and their policies procedures and laws um, so yes yeah, starting a business in Tanzania is definitely an option um, it's not something that you have to feel is something that is you know you can't do you absolutely can do it a lot of people have as you know I own a business in Tanzania so you can get the process done it's just a matter of what industry you want to go in what type of business you want to do and then talking to someone to, to figure out how you go about that process and that requires um, a legal expert which my company provides as well okay so we have one other question it says let's talk about very budget I'm um, friendly accommodations and lifestyle in Zanzibar and Arusha. I'm traveling with my 11 year old son. We do need a safe place not far from the beach, kitchen, fast internet, air conditioning, hot water, um, and the cost of living. Let me start with Arusha. If you want to be near the beach, Arusha is not near the beach. <laughs> Arusha is about a 10 hour drive from Dar es Salaam. Um, Arusha is in the mountains and it's not a beach area. That is where you would stop fly in to go on safari so that's where you're going to be in more of a mountainous area it is cost effective it's going to be cheaper than Dar es Salaam and it's what I would call a more country uh, way of living so it's going to be a little bit more it's going to be more rural than Dar es Salaam because that's where you go like I said on safari where the animals are you know the city of Arusha of course is not in the middle of the Serengeti um, but that the city of Arusha is also the diplomatic hub so that's where you're going to find um, that type of environment as far as cost of living like I mentioned yes Arusha is going to be cheaper than Dar es Salaam so that is a great option um, the scenery is absolutely beautiful because like I said it's in the mountains and if you could think of maybe like Colorado or places like that is it's, it's, it's beautiful the other good thing I would say the other pro about Arusha is the weather it's much much cooler than Dar es Salaam so the adjustment is much easier and the weather is is, is gorgeous there the addressing the fast internet the air conditioning hot water that type of thing air conditioning hot water you can absolutely find that in Arusha um, it's not going to be as common as Dar es Salaam because again it's not a place that's going to be as um, populous it's not going to be as developed it, you may not find housing as frequently as you would in Dar es Salaam with those accommodations but it does not mean that it cannot be found fast internet is going to be more infrequent there than it would be in Dar es Salaam because it is not a business hub and is not um, as developed so the internet is going to be something that's going to be more spotty in Arusha than it would be in Dar es Salaam
Now, as far as Zanzibar is concerned, yes, that is going to be beach living. Zanzibar is a coastal island. Um, so that is definitely going to give you your beach living as far as cost. It's very economical. You can find places to live in Zanzibar um, that can probably fit any budget. You can also find places that are going to have the air conditioning um, that you were talking about. Same thing with the internet. It's probably going to be a little bit more sp um, spotty because most of the resources are going to hit the main island first and then spread out from there. Um, it's also an area that is high in tourism. So you'll see a lot of tourists in Zanzibar because it's gorgeous i mean zanzibar is absolutely it's just amazing it's the indian ocean surrounds it um the ocean water is warm the beaches are beautiful um it's just that it's definitely that tropical lifestyle you know that laid back just stress-free zen lifestyle so zanzibar is, is a wonderful option as well it's also one of the two place well it's there's two out of three and one of the places being Zanzibar where you can find planned communities. So that's another option as well that you don't see anywhere else. The other planned community, the only other planned community that they have in Tanzania is on the mainland. So two of the three planned communities are located on the coastal island of Zanzibar. So that is a good option for you. The only thing that, like I said, is going to be the internet is, um, could be an issue because as you know, um, on the continent and specifically um, in Tanzania they do still lose power and um, sometimes there is a water shortage so that's something to keep in mind and as I tell people you know different does not mean bad but it does mean that it's going to be different than maybe what you are normally used to and you have to keep in mind that it is still a developing country so a lot of things that are standard else place are not necessarily standard there and there are a lot of things that you know they're still working out the kinks as time goes on and they're progressing more and more day by day the country is growing um, the country is developing um, they are doing a lot to push forward and that is quite amazing to see it's a beautiful beautiful country with a lot to offer the culture is amazing and beautiful they have a ton of history there and they pretty much have something for everyone i mean if you want the country mountainous lifestyle you can have it. if you want the beach lifestyle you can have it if you want the urban city like living in new york lifestyle you can have it um if you want more of you know living on land and not being able to necessarily see your neighbors you can have it so they have something for everyone just because geographically the country is absolutely enormous you can fit all of the i think pretty much all the east african countries inside of tanzania most people i think don't realize how huge the country is but geographically the country is enormous so if you're only in dar es salaam you only maybe experience a millimeter of what the country has to offer and of what the culture is actually like. Um, Tanzania is broken up by regions and each region has a different type of experience and a different type of cultural experience and environment. Um, very similar to the United States where we have different, each state functions a little bit different than its neighbor. So um, you'll find a little bit different dialect depending on where you go. Uh, but a little bit different way of life depending on where you go so the country is is pretty massive so just keep that in mind as well so that is the end of my q and a thank you guys so much for our participating this was actually quite fun i love 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 educating people on the united republic of tanzania and sharing just my personal insight and experience um, as I mentioned before, you know, everybody has a little bit different experience when they're there and mine is kind of unique to a lot of foreigners. So I love to just share and give some insight about that as well. And, um, you know, have a little bit of fun with you guys and answering any questions, concerns, or comments you may have. Cause I know, you know, it's a little strange when you're trying to get to know a foreign place that might be a lot different than what you're normally used to. So with that being said, I will check you guys out for the next video. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, comment, ring the bell, all that good stuff. And thank you again for supporting me and my channel and being a part of this Ebonite community. <laughs> Until next time, guys. Bye.